While large sections of the London literary and intellectual scene moved to the far left, Pototsky's anti-establishment reactions and royalist convictions involved him in a move to the extreme right, resulting in the monthly publications of his controversial Counterblast to Bolshevism, The Right Review. During the Second World War, convinced that fascism was a lesser evil than communism, he adopted a pro-German stance, sooner than ally himself with Russia. Sometime after the war, he wrote, It is true that I am opposed to virtually every movement or line of thought triumphant at the moment, but does not the fearsome and uncertain state of the world show I am right in this? He considers his most important piece of political writing to be his Katyn Manifesto of 1943. He has always claimed that he was the only person during the war to publish, in English, details of the massacre of 14,000 Polish servicemen by the Russian allies in the woods at Katyn. What, what happened at Katyn? Oh, what happened at Katyn? Perfectly simple. It's that the, the uh, Bolsheviks, uh, having, uh, you might say, barged in, they, they captured all the Polish officers who didn't uh, run away, and there were several thousand of those, uh, and uh, th they put them in three great camps at uh, uh, Kozielsk, uh, uh, Starobielsk, and uh, Ostashko. And um, uh, in batches, they shot the whole lot of them. But when Goebbels made his announcement that they actually found the corpses and it became a public issue in Europe, the English decided it was best to let the Poles blow off steam in, in Polish, but not in English. And I myself, I went up to see the Poles and I said, uh, this is some more German lies. And they said, oh no, certainly not, and so on. And they uh, demanded that I should print something to make. Uh, my relatives on them, my mother's side uh, looked the facts in the face, and I said, all right, well, I'll do that. And they then wanted to write it, and I said, oh, no, you don't. I'm writing it myself, you see. And I went straight back home, and I set it up in a great hurry, and in the end, I printed a very large number of copies. And, uh, my tactics were that I went up to London with the first batch, and I went round very rapidly, as many, as many post boxes and post offices as I could, and throwing certain, so that they, they would all come from different sources. And one of the first lot went to the chief of police. Yes, I always did that. The Poles were frankly very grateful for the manifesto. Now, were questions asked about it in the House of oh, Commons? Oh, yes. There was a question asked in the House of Commons by some uh, lackey who was uh, at the service of the Soviets, a Labour Party member, of course, and he wanted to know whether the minister was going to order me to be arrested uh, for disturbing the relations between the Allies. And Mo Morrison, who was himself a pacifist in the First World War, he gave a written reply in which he said that um, uh, these... Uh, manifestos are the imaginary emanations of the brain of a person calling himself Vladislas the fifth king of Poland and Hungary and uh, nobody takes them seriously and uh, which of course wasn't true lots of people look at seriously but uh, um, he said uh, for this reason he wasn't going to have me arrested but then you see all my so-called friends came tripping around and they said look at Pototsky uh, our government doesn't want to arrest you on the say-so of the Soviets but you watch out in two months' time, you're going inside on any pretext, whatever. Of course, that's what happened. I was arrested quite illegally. So you see that in the whole English-speaking world, uh, the English government managed to get it hushed up, except for what I printed in England and what another Polish count of quite a famous family printed in Wellington. Pototsky was arrested on what he perceived to be a trumped-up charge of insufficient black art and spent four months in Wandsworth Prison. After his release, he was sent to an agricultural camp in Northumbria on a six-month work order. His contempt for the English reached a point where he could no longer continue to live in England. After the war, he left for Europe and eventually settled in the south of France, where he obtained land, some olive trees, and a derelict stone cottage deep in the Provencal countryside. He's been based there ever since.